Hey everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. In the rare chance that we get to discuss a topic that's not Clayton Eckerd, we jump on that. And who but Chris Harrison, former Bachelor host. Uh, I've had mixed feelings towards Chris. On one end, I thought he was always a good host. On the other, you know, he wasn't great and he wasn't immune from the scandal that ended up ditching him his job. Uh, with that said, I do... Uh, respect when I can hear him talk about the power struggles from employer to employee. We are so trained in society to side with the employer. It really is like trauma bonding. Trauma bonding, a.k.a., which again is a misused term, trauma bonding, which is also like Stockholm Syndrome, is when we sort of side with the abuser. Now, are employees abusers or employers abusers? Well, in some ways, they will dangle carrots in front of you, pay you just enough, and provide for you just enough so that you'll keep coming back. No employer wants to give their employee enough money so that they can go pursue other opportunities. So in this case, we actually have Chris Harrison talking with Cheryl Burke, one of my favorite dancers. She started on season two of Dancing with the Stars, danced for 20 years or whatever, a long time, 39 seasons, whatever it was. And she uh, was promised the hosting job in one way or another for Dancing with the stars never got it and then actually thought that chris was the one who stopped her from becoming the bachelorette could you imagine if we had cheryl burke as the bachelorette maybe it's not too late oh my gosh i love cheryl burke she's sexy she's smart she's funny she's a great dancer artistic integrity we love cheryl burke right Either way, we're going to cover what was said on Chris Harrison's podcast. Follow me on Instagram, at dneals. I'll be live on Patreon, right as you're watching this, patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind-the-scenes bonus content. We've never had so many people sign up for Patreon as you have this month. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Every afternoon is Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. It is also the best and most successful month ever for the podcast. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in for that original entertainment content. All right, so as it goes, I saw this post first. They got me with the clickbait. Page six says, Cheryl Burke claims Bachelorette producers told her Chris Harrison didn't want her to star on The Bachelorette because she was a sloppy drunk. She said, I heard you blocked that. Did you not? And then we're going to get Chris Harrison's response here. Of course, it is more measured and composed than uh, the title would have you believe. But this is, again, on Chris Harrison's podcast, Most Traumatic Podcast with Chris Harrison. I got to tell you, someone asked me the other day, they said, hey, I haven't heard much about Chris Harrison's podcast. And I was like, well, I don't know. It's these Zoom interviews. Who really likes it? I said what he should have done was invested some of the money from his settlement into a world-class studio. Pay your uh, guests to come in. You know what I mean? Make it top tier. You know, do all that. But instead, they're just doing the Zoom stuff, which is fine, too. Here's their conversation. Have a listen young as it got right totally yeah it wasn't like they weren't bringing in the child actors right or like the child pros dancing so much as producers they they prey on and use the sexuality so much that's such a huge part but it's of still the show. disney friendly why do you think that dancing with the stars was ever disney friendly it's never I don't been know. disney you see, just because you have a you disney literally night literally see inside people's organs yeah when they do the splits in those little tiny costumes it's like how how and this is what's funny is the bachelor franchise and it and dance with the stars are both on abc owned by disney so they claim to be this like morally superior sort of network tv we're here to find love it's like you're banging in a yurt okay you're doing the split and by the way I, i'm not i don't care that they're doing skimpy dance moves on dancing with the stars i think dancing is sexual i think that's part of what it is i have no problem with that when i got rid of the bachelor world it's I mean, it something I've been a part of for 20 years. I can't. So again, yeah. it's not positive or negative. It just is what it is. How is the grieving process though? There, You do. It's You but go how through. how is yours? It was difficult Hard. because mine was, yeah. you know, obviously, I don't know if you heard, it <laughs> no. was a bit of a shit show. It got a little traumatic and it was kind of public. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yep. Um, and I mean, so, considering I don't watch TV and I still heard about it, like that is, <laughs> you, you know, you know that you're like huge then. Mine went very public. It got very nasty and got litigious and, and contentious and all those things. But how did you like, was it a shock to the system? It was a big traumatic experience because I'm I've been sure. doing stuff for, for 20 years. I kind of thought I was probably going to continue on for a little bit longer anyway, I I'd, I'd started to think about, okay, what's next and, and moving away from the show, but it wasn't time yet. And by the way, if anyone knows Cheryl Burke, I would love to get her on Driving with Dave. I mean, wouldn't this be amazing? Let's do that. How when, many seasons when, did you do? I did. I don't know how many seasons. I'm terrible about that. I did 20 years. 
How dare you don't know? Well, not, actually, here's the problem. I did 19 and a half years. Uh. I wanted to get to 20. I was My thing was when I get to 20 years, I'm, I'm probably going to step away. I'll figure out what this is. But obviously, you you know, nobody gets to leave typically on their own accord. I mean, I did. Speaking of Disney, but. life's life's not a Disney movie. Is that how you left? Did you you decide to leave? No, I I decided. Well, this is what I decided that I no longer want to be a pro dancer. Okay, but you know, I also want to evolve and Maybe host it, or judge. Right? Wouldn't that be natural? Like yeah. you would think, right? You're one of the I, biggest I've, stars. I've been, the long, I've been there the longest. You're one of the biggest right? stars to have ever come through that. And this is how it works, right? Like Derek Huff was a dancer. Now he's a judge. Uh, his sister, uh, Huff, what's her name again? She is now a host. Dancing's exhausting. It's You get injured. I mean, it's they're really putting their bodies on the line. So I can understand why a lot of dancers want to evolve past the dancer world because you realize and you look at it and you go, hey, mid-30s is essentially retirement age for dancers. There are literal dancer support groups that exist in the sag after community because, you know, they can really hurt themselves and they need to have an exit, exit plan from there. So she said, you know, I wanted to be a host. And she's beautiful. She's well-spoken. I don't see why she wouldn't be a great host. That show. Regardless of star, I mean, it's just like loyal. It's hard for me to separate the business yeah. and um, the personal because, like, these people are my family, and yeah, or, but they're not. But they're not right. Yeah. But what's so hard is that, like, they've seen me at my most vulnerable. Right. So, oh god, there's so much I want to say, but I just no, can't no, get myself into no, trouble. The it. difficult thing is. Yeah. Mouth. You do when you when you work, and this is not necessarily a knock on ABC or Disney or Warner, who I worked for, but partly what they want you to do as an employee. And this is if I owned a big company, I would want you to feel like you're a big of a big part, big happy family. You're a part but of this. That you're family. replaceable. That yes, but yeah, you don't get too comfortable because right, you are replaceable. Right. But hey, we want you to sacrifice everything. You wanted to walk away from professional dancing because okay, first of all, I've been saying it for a while, but mm -hmm. also like I just as an artist, honestly, just looking at like my potential and yeah. wanting to just grow, like for me, this whole last year or two years, you know, since my separation and divorce and everything has been a huge growth growth in my life, just like growing period where I just want to evolve. And I can't walk away from my marriage and then walk away and not walk away from the show. Yeah. Because it's it's all similar, right? It's all coming from the same, I guess, need of wanting to evolve. And if that's with you, great. If it's not, great. But I'm moving on. And so... I'm going to guess, well, you wanted to stay. You wanted to stay. I as, wanted to stay as, as with host, another job title, yeah. As a host or, or a judge. Mm -hmm. and, and they knew very much that I was wanting this for many years. My guess, I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay. Knowing the executives. And, and by the way, she was married to Matthew Lawrence. Couple tied the knot on Thursday, May 23rd in San Diego in 2019, I believe. Uh, so anyway, that uh, I guess that relationship didn't work out. Uh, but either way, let's get Cheryl Burke to be the Bachelorette. Are you kidding me? I would love that. And especially the executive you were dealing with. My guess promises were made. Absolutely, to, for many years. So promises were made to Cheryl Burke many times over. I know they were made to you about the Bachelor and Bachelorette and do, being on that People show. People are still talking about it. Yeah. I know. So I, I, Wait, I, I heard you block that. Did you not? No. Oh, I thought you did that. They so Cheryl says regarding her becoming the bachelorette, I heard you cock blocked that. And he says, no, what? You put that on me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like I have they, that much power. Someone said to like, me. Like I have the power no, to decide kidding, who the actually. bachelor bachelorette is. No, I think they blamed it on you. Absolutely. That's funny. But it's also the beast that we work for, right? But why? It's Hollywood. It's this business. They Because they are just as scared. You know, everybody has a boss and those people are scared to death. And so it's just- so Everyone's living in fear. Yeah. And so- What you're learning now and what I'm learning as we watch Clayton Eckerd's court case is how afraid people are. Everyone's afraid to discuss what's right. Everyone's afraid to discuss their opinions on things. People are afraid. Now, this isn't me saying, oh, cancel culture, man, everyone's afraid. But what you see is there is a time that we exist in where people's opinions can be swayed by what they think the public wants because they have a fear of 
kind of uh, losing. Everyone's just trying to, you know, out for themselves. And that's what we are as society. It's a bunch of humans trying to make the best decisions for ourselves. They And look, they love being around the talent. They yeah, love being around the stars and they, they love to make promises, right? They get to walk in the room. They get to be the star of that room full of stars. And do you it's, think they really love to make promises that they can't keep? Like, I don't think I could do that as a human being. Well, I don't know if they necessarily love that. Like, they don't love lying. They love control. Well, I don't know if they even necessarily know they do it. I think it is almost a, you walk in a room full of stars and all of a sudden you are the star. Like all these people, all the dancers, when this person walks in and goes, oh, hey, you know, most Bob, of them don't know who he is. Yeah, Bob. and like, you hey, have how you doing? Another name. And so you walk in, and everyone knows this person, and he's actually popular, right? Right. In that moment, yeah. or she, whoever the yes. executive is at that time, and yeah, they're going to make promises to you because it makes you happy. They're just saying things to placate you and make you happy because they need to get you to want to sacrifice. If I tell Cheryl, "Hey, you're going to be host or judge. Trust me. Like everybody loves you. You're going places. I'll take care of you." You're going to dance in your living room when you have COVID. You're going to come in wait, and wait, break wait, a wait. leg. I'm going to interrupt you. I think this is why um, I started to speak up for myself, right? Yeah. Whether you want to call it um, a woman with an opinion or somebody who is egotistical, narcissistic, it's, it's neither. It's just the fact that I was learning the bullshit. Yeah. And I was so tired of it. And I was tired of going through William Morris, my agent, who was basically calling them out like, it was exactly what you had said. And then it was like, put it in writing. So very good. I mean, cool to see the dynamics that exist from the behind the scenes of being promised from your bosses. You're going to get this promotion. Now, again, people might say, well, no one's, you know, you, no one's you know, given anything. And it's like, yeah, you know, but some honesty would go a long way. Now, speaking of being honest, I got to tell you, I did not realize Cheryl Burke was doing this interview in person. I was speaking towards a lot of these Zoom interviews and how poorly they're run. Their audio was okay for in person. Of course, they're using the Shure SM58 microphone, which is a decent $100 microphone. You know, you could splurge for the $400 microphone. That's, I think, a little bit better but either way i digress it's not bad but let's play this clip so you can just so you can see the video of them having that conversation over many times over i know they were made to you about the bachelor and bachelorette and do being on that People show are still talking about it yeah i know so i i, Wait, I, I heard you block that did you not no. Oh, I thought you did that. They put right, so you can see the moment where he says, they put that on me. You got to be kidding me. All right. Well, as you know, we like to give you a little sample of what's going on in the world. And in the Bachelor adjacent world, we've got Dancing with the Stars and Bachelor mixing. Would you like to see Cheryl Burke as the Bachelorette? Let me know. And by the way, she, you, know, you know, as far as ages go, she would be on the late 30s end of the, I, mean, I think it's perfect time if she's still single and wants it. Uh, Bachelor Rush Hour, the afternoon podcast. I'll have all of your entertainment news in one place right there on Bachelor Rush Hour. We'll be back right after this.